Hello to all. So here is just a standard stock Ruger 1022 chassis. Pretty boring, but it works. It does what it should do along with that. And here I just have a regular oil receiver for Ruger 1022 as well. But decided to be adventurous. I was going to upgrade that receiver. Went down the rabbit hole and I ended up just purchasing a completely new receiver on its own the Fletcher Rifle Works 1122 open top receiver and with that I ended up just getting a whole bunch of other stuff for it so in the end essentially I'm going to have two separate guns but I went to Gray Birch Manufacturing and I purchased a few items from them it just came in a standard cardboard box bubble wrap and some foam inside it and also inside they gave me some stickers the manual some other stickers there's also some mounting hardware in there and then I got the Le Chassis the Le Chassis so I'll take a closer look at it here in a second but here is the body they make it for a few different 22 models it's weird because almost this whole thing here these three parts cost as much as two ruger 1022s pretty much and the receiver i got as well here's the stock and then i got the 10 inch four end as well so all these look really really nice right off the bat it looks a little bit darker from what i saw online it's going to be an interesting match right there. And I got, um, I don't know if you guys can see the barrel real well yet, but I got an interesting color barrel. But we'll take a closer look at these. So far, they all look great. So altogether, these three parts cost a little bit over $500. Uh, they were a bit slow getting it out and getting it to me. Apparently, they had some of their product lost to the coating, the anodizer, and they had to ramp stuff up to get some more stuff out. So it ended up taking about two weeks for me to get these parts right here. But as you guys can see here, this is a great looking piece of metal right here. Beautifully shaped, a lot of detail to it. Man, it looks good. So that is the chassis body. They also make one for a CZ. I forgot the exact model. I want to say 427. This is a 10 inch rail. They offer a shorter one as well. It is M-Lock as well as Arca mount capable, um, accepts Arca mounts as well. Very light. And then the stock, the freaking stock, you could buy a Ruger 1022 for the cost of this stock right here. Mounts up similarly to uh, the MCX 1913 style mounts. This right here feels like cheap plastic, but <laughs> very stylish as well. I think it's about $250 for the stock here. Some other little features of it do include a threaded spot back here for you to Drive a screw down, make contact, contact in the back of your receiver. It's not the worst matchup right there. Well, I don't know how that's going to go. If you guys can see there at the top, just a little bit, there's the cleaning hole for the Fletcher Works um, opening. And then I'm not sure how that screw is going to exactly contact back there. But it's a good match right there. Looking at it, I'm very worried about my barrel color choice. Um, I got a Faxon barrel. It's probably like the third, fourth barrel I've gotten from them. I have no issues whatsoever, but this is very, very loud right here. So, um, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to install it, see how it goes. And I'll show you guys once it's done. All right, so the rifle is complete. I got the receiver dropped in the chassis and I am pleased with the outcome. I will have to say I'm not 100% sold on the barrel and color, 
They do have different variations. I think it might just be a crapshoot at what color your bear will be. I've seen a photo of one like this that has a lot, lot more gray, and that's one I would have really, really liked in this one to match with all the other gray, but it just didn't come out that, that way. So we'll see how it goes. As of now, it's all right, but not completely sold on it. The chassis, uh, not a lot of issues putting it in. As far as the fitment, there's very, very little gaps between the receiver. The biggest thing was, I'm not sure if it was correctly uh, threaded, the receiver. There was one side of the barrel retention block, whatever you call it, on this rifle. One side, it was difficult to get in, but eventually got it all the way down. Hopefully I didn't strip anything down there. Uh, but on the chassis, this part is actually adjustable on the forend. You have uh, two little slots. I have it as far back as it goes. I guess you could get maybe a quarter inch further down the barrel. Um, when I did put it in, I noticed once the action screw was in, I could actually grab right here and that the receiver would rock. Like, hands down, it was very, very noticeable. But there's a little set screw back here. Well, a hole threaded for a set screw. Got that in, twisted it down. I may have ended up drilling into the receiver possibly, but it's not, you know, uh, visible as it is. So probably, have to, probably just have to let that one go. Um, magazines in the receiver, or the chassis rather, they do not fall out freely. Just a little tin on mag. The stock, again, seems kind of plasticky here and as of now, it's all right, don't have optic on it. As far as folding it and this mechanism back here, it is not as robust or stout as the MCX version. You just have like a little nub that places in between the 1913 like rails that keeps it in stock, that keeps it in check. And you have a very thin uh, clamp here on the side that brings it all together. Uh, definitely not like the six hour lines of stock. And also it is less intuitive. Well, I think I've had, you know, uh, the stocks for the MCX and stuff like that, on the MPX rather. And on those, you push down and pull up. Here you gotta go down and it's the opposite way. If you have anything from SIG like that, this is actually the opposite way. You push down on the stock instead of up. And I'm not used to that, but there we go. And then it folds. So some retention there but you just have to give it a little bit of pressure and it will come uh, close the other way. So no real negatives I can point out right now. Um, I might end up changing the pistol grip. It is kind of weird having an AR-15 pistol grip and you move your thumb to actuate something and nothing's there. Different operating that safety. Um, I will try some magnified optics out on this to see uh, what that kind of eye relief will be. Cause as you can see, the rail is pretty far forward. Uh, you can't mount anything back here as of now, but should be all right. I messed with the cheek riser and length of pull. Haven't done any of that yet, but with length of pull as flat as it is, that is still pretty far out there. And I'm not really sure about that. You have to have like a long eye relief scope. I think if you just have a regular non canted mount. Uh, beautiful chassis, nice receiver. Bax makes good barrels, we'll see how accurate it is as far as the color, yeah. But live and learn. I might just have it sitting around and eventually just blow carbon fiber, blow money for a carbon fiber barrel down the road, but we'll see. Uh, stay tuned for more videos, range outing, stuff like that. I'll keep you guys updated. Thanks for watching.